Take your family on a Lenten retreat at sea with Michael Voris and Father Z of the world-renowned Catholic blog, What Does the Prayer Really Say? Couples and singles should also cast off to the Caribbean for this seven-day trip. And those who have signed up are encouraged to introduce themselves ahead of time on our Facebook event page. To sign up for the cruise, please visit the website on your screen or call 805-526-6565. That's 805-526-6565. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Vore. So the results are in from a survey we issued last week, and it was a pretty sizable number of people who responded. Now, in more scientific professional polls like Gallup and those sorts of things, small samples are taken and then various algorithms and calculus and formulas are applied to extrapolate results, which we all see then in headlines like Obama favored by white female voters 56 to 39 percent. And some people are still amazed when the actual results come back and they're pretty darn close to what the polling info predicted. That's because of all the scientific formulas applied to that raw data. But in the absence of formulas and demographic research, polling size, the number of people who actually take the poll or survey, is also a good indicator of its accuracy. And in this case, with ours, with our Causes of the Crisis in the Catholic Church survey, more than 2,600 people responded. That is a sample size four to five times that of a typical scientific survey. So, even without all the applied science that the big boys have, we feel pretty confident that these results are reflective on the reality of reality on the ground. So, let's get to it. Of the ten choices we offered, which again were gleaned from thousands of emails, letters, phone calls, studio drop-in visits, face-to-face -face encounters where people kept proposing and talking about all kinds of issues in their parishes, schools, RCIA, CCHD, chanceries, universities, seminaries, houses of formation, etc., these ten were easily the most commonly referenced. Again, just to sort of reset and remind you, they were poor lay education and priestly formation on all levels, school, college, RCI, RCIA, seminary, lack of zeal by bishops, more interested in earthly concerns than spiritual, rebellion among clergy being disobedient to the magisterium, unwillingness or cowardice in confronting dissent, a don't rock the boat attitude on the part of leaders, abuses at the Novus Ordo Mass, lack of reverence, understanding of the sacrifice, liberal social justice agenda, including a lack of attention to pro-life issues, cafeteria Catholics, those indifferent and lukewarm to the faith, false ecumenism, too much Protestant influence in liturgies and life of the church, the homosexual clergy network, the infiltration into parish life seminaries and orders of homosexual clergy, and secular relativism, attacks against the faith from outside the church. And the top three most chosen causes by those who took the survey were, drum roll please, number one, poor lay education and priestly formation on all levels, school, college, RCIA, seminary. Lack of zeal by bishops, bishops being more interested in earthly concerns than spiritual, and a rebellion among the clergy being disobedient to the magisterium. What we found noteworthy was how close these three were in relation to each other in the final count. They came in at 1, 2, and 3, but they were only slightly separated. That these three would all finish very close to each other suggests that faithful Catholics believe that the crisis in the church can be laid squarely at the feet of bishops who are not doing their job teaching the faithful through the priests, many of whom are simply disobedient to the magisterium and do not teach or are faithful to the teachings of the church announced by the magisterium. This all should be a cause of concern, great concern, for our shepherds. It's already quite obvious that dissident Catholics and lukewarm Catholics simply disregard the office and the authority of bishops. But when faithful Catholics, and that includes priests as well as laity, see the bishops as incompetent or unwilling to faithfully execute the duties they have as shepherds, this is a very deep concern. It speaks directly to the question of trust. And for faithful Catholics who begin to feel they cannot trust their shepherd, 
This can, all, this can have all kinds of corrosive effects. Author David Carlin, in his deeply insightful book, The Decline and Fall of the Catholic Church in America, makes this observation in light of the sexual revolution and secularism. Quote, it has been an era, the recent post-Vatican II era, in which the church in the United States needed bishops whose leadership qualities would remind us of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and Franklin Roosevelt. Instead, what we got was bishops reminding us of James Buchanan and Herbert Hoover, men unsuited for high leadership during dark and dangerous times. That quote from page 315. We need to pray and sacrifice for our bishops. They need to step up and confront the wolves attacking the flock, those on the outside, but most especially those who have already gotten inside the pen, many of whom whisper in their ears every day, and many of whom are the pastors that they have appointed in various parishes under their care. It is a sad reality to talk about and have to confront, but the unwillingness to do so will not make the problem go away. The church is in a free fall in the West, and our blessed Lord established its form of governance so that it may be restored quickly in such circumstances. That time has come, and thousands of faithful Catholics understand this. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. ChurchMilitant.tv. Join us in combat. Become a premium member today.